Awesome. Thank you all so much for joining today. We're going to be going over uh, virtual appointments, which is a new app that integrates with bookings in Microsoft Teams. So I'm really excited to have you all uh, join us today for this session. It looks like it's going to be a great group based on uh, the poll that we just launched. It looks like we're pretty evenly split with the amount of people that have used bookings or maybe haven't. So I am going to go over just a, a few basics in bookings. And if I didn't say it, which I always forget, I'm Amanda Pritchard. I work in the Office of Information Technology, and I'm the Emerging Tech Manager there. So we like to uh, have opportunities like this to talk to you a little bit about the technology we've been testing and playing with and, and let you know how you might be able to use it for your department and your team's needs. Uh, we are hosting this as a webinar today, so that means your camera and mic are disabled, so nobody heard you singing along, and you are able to engage with us in our chat. So please feel free to post. I've got people helping to moderate that, and I love getting to see those messages pop up, too, just as we're sharing information. So feel free to post, ask questions. Um, if, if there's anything that's unclear, I definitely want you to post it there and just share with us because we're here to help you, and this is a, a brand new app, so we're really excited to show it off to you. Microsoft showed it to us just a little uh, while back, about a month or two ago, as they were developing it, and now we've got it ready to launch and to share with the university. And so, um, and yes, I'm so I very much made it hard on you to pick that full question. There was only two choices there, whether you did use bookings and are familiar, whether you're not. More just trying to get a feel as to have you heard of it, have you used it, is it something that's even on your radar? So it looks like we're fairly evenly split. Quick recap. Uh, even if you are familiar with it, maybe you haven't heard it defined the Amanda way. Um, so Bookings is what we use in the university for managing and scheduling appointments. And that's appointment to person to person. It's not really designed as a person to a resource. I'm not, I'm not booking a, um, a, a spot at my desk. I'm not booking a laptop. I'm not reserving a space. I'm wanting to meet person to person or virtually, but having that individual kind of conversation or small group conversation. So, that's how we utilize bookings at the university. It's been amazing for, I know so many departments use it if they have any type of uh, counseling appointment. I use it for interviewing. Um, it, so it, it really can vary how you want to leverage it, but it just boils down to if you need to make those appointments. So I'll go ahead and advance my own slides. Um, so what is bookings? Again, it's just that appointment scheduling. It's part of the Microsoft suite. If you have attended any session with me, you can post in the chat, where do we go to, to navigate to all of the Microsoft products available to us at UT Dallas? There's one central website that I always recommend. So if you know that answer, go ahead and post it in the chat for us and we'll all clap for you for being an A-plus student. If you don't know it, I'll tell you, don't worry. Um, but uh, go ahead and post if you know the, the one website where we go to look up all of the apps that are on Microsoft. John, man, look at you. First place. Yes, office.com, Microsoft 365. Either way, that's going to get you all of those applications. If you go to office.com, you will see on there that Microsoft Bookings is one of the applications that we offer. So you're able to, to go there and pull up Bookings and create a calendar if you want to use it. If you haven't created a calendar yet, that's fine. You can just listen along, and, and I'll show you some of mine, and we can talk to um, the others that are attending and just understand a little bit about how others may be using it as well. Uh, you're able to create and manage those appointments in there. You do have the option every time you uh, create an appointment, you can make it a Teams meeting. So if you just want to have them schedule those, those quick meetings, or you can put a location in there and meet face-to-face. -face. Um, great question. So office.com, if you go to office.com and navigate in that upper left corner, there's going to be the, a series of little dots there. It looks like a little waffle. Just need some syrup on it. Click on the waffle. When you see that, it will drop down with all of the apps that you get as part of UT Dallas in our suite. So if you want to find it there, you're welcome to kind of 
follow along, but we're going to focus more on the Teams integration today than we are on the actual uh, the web version, just because this is the newer thing, the Teams version. Uh, so you're able to create those appointments. You're able to send your calendar request as well as your meeting reminders. Thank you, Danny. And if you if you do have a staff or multiple people that need to be in on those appointments, let's just think of um, JSOM's counseling office, their advisors. There's a number of advisors in JSOM. So if they needed to see everyone's availability, scheduling, you could all share it there and be able to see everyone's at a glance, how frequently they're getting booked, how many appointments they're having, that sort of thing on that shared calendar. So um, that's the best way to kind of track that, that staff and their availability. If you go, Renee, go to office.com. That's going to be better than trying to navigate. There is an M365 through UTD. I don't know the link off the top of my head. I always preach office.com. It's the easiest way to get there. I know you're trying to find it. Okay, so that's a little bit about what bookings is. What we are going to focus on today, and I will show my bookings calendar and show you just a little bit of what that looks like, especially for those that are not familiar with it. But what we're going to focus on is this new app in Teams. So it's going to allow you to do a few things differently than what you were doing on the web version of bookings. Uh, this is just to try to make it a more streamlined experience. Uh, for those of you who do use bookings, by raise of hand, can you just tell me if you agree with the statement that it, it's a little bit of a learning curve setting up your services and your staff and bookings. It's a, it's a little bit of a learning curve. I mean, it took me a little while and I was doing it frequently. If you're not raising your hands and you said you're familiar with bookings, you're going to do the trainings from now on. Okay. So it is a little bit tricky. Thank y'all for raising your hands. That felt very validating. It's a little bit tricky when you're just learning and setting it up. The app version is trying to help make that a smoother process for our users and just to make it a little bit more streamlined. So there, it it's kind of has all the bookings calendar gizmos and gadgets in one just on the app. So it's a, a little bit more streamlined. And yes, uh, thank you, Kaylin. I agree. It was a little, a little hard when you're first using it. You have to learn some new language and, and click new places. But on the app, you can still create those appointments. You can even create ad hoc appointments, such as walk-ins. Uh, you're able to still manage those appointment types. So if you need to move it to a different service, you're able to do that. Still send those emails. Um, and then you are able to allow users to join from mobile. So if they just want to call into their appointment, as opposed to joining a Teams meeting, they're able to do that as well. And any, any details that you want to send, if there's something specific that that attendee needs to know, like wear a pink shirt to the interview, you're able to give any of those details to them as well um, through this app, okay? So I'm gonna show you, you are welcome to, to do this and follow along. I'm showing you on the slides first, just cause mine is already added. So it gets a little wonky when I try to add it and share screen. Uh, so I'm gonna show you in slides, but then I can show you where uh, on the Teams application itself too when I share my screen here in just a second. Um, but adding that app in Teams, if you're on Teams now and you want to navigate there and just go ahead and add it so that you can preview it and follow along, you're welcome to do that. Certainly by no means required to do that. But if you want to select the apps icon, you can select that. It's usually the bottom left on that side far left panel in uh, Teams. So if you select apps, it's going to then pull up da -da 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 -da, a little search that you can search for all of the uh, applications that are available. So in there, what you're going to type in is virtual appointments. There's a chance that you've already been using an app, uh, the Bookings app in Teams, and this one's just slightly different. They kind of finessed it a little bit, made it a little fancier for us, and gave it some new bells and whistles. So when you select that virtual appointments option, it'll pull up, and then you'll want to select the little add icon. Uh, once you select add, it will take it, depending on your, your processing speed and teams and internet connectivity, it may take it just a minute or two to sync and connect and pull in your calendars. I know I think I have six or seven bookings calendars, so it took mine just a minute or two to get up to speed and, um, and really make that connection available. Okay, so we are going to dive in here 
And I'm going to stop sharing and alternate my screens here for just a second. While I do that, I'll go ahead and pull up our next poll. Just as we're talking about apps and adding an app uh, in, I'm curious to see if anybody else uses apps in, in Teams. Uh, there's a number of them. Some of them you can add without issues. Some of them, you there are issues, <laughs> so you're not able to add them. But I know for me, I'll enter the one that I use the most. But you can pull in a number of apps in your Teams client. If there's certain things that you use over and over and you just want that integrated in one place, you're able to pull those in. So I love getting to see some of those answers. We've got SharePoint, Planner, Poly, OneNote, Box, Shifts, PowerPoint. Those are all things that are available. So those are great responses. I'll let you all finish that. And I will know. Uh, Lori asked a great question. Sorry, I'm just catching up to the chat. Uh, Lori, you, to delete a bookings calendar that's no longer needed, you would just need to open up a ticket uh, with us. There's a reason we, we block the delete button so that there's no uh-ohs with accidentally deleting one that you didn't really mean to. So we'll just manually delete that on our end, but it's not a problem. It's very easy. We're able to do that for you. Okay, so. I'm going to share my Teams client here. It's going to let me. Here we go. Okay, perfect. Trying to maneuver things around. Okay, hopefully, Danny, can you just verbally confirm everything's displaying okay for y'all? You can see my. Yes. yes. Yeah. It says I was supposed to be up at two, though. Just, <laughs> yes, it looks good. I told you you couldn't change your calendar to that. Good try. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I tried. <laughs> I know. Anybody else trying to sneak away for the holiday weekend? I know, Danny, I told him, I was like, y'all, everyone's going to see your calendar, just so you know. And so he was he was trying to put off at two, but he's got a rough boss, so wouldn't let you off. Sorry, Danny. Um, so if you've added it in, I'll just go ahead and, as I mentioned, too, this is where you would see it um, on your screen here, uh, right here. You can see that mine's been added. If you were still looking for apps, it's down in this bottom left circle here. So you're able to open up apps, then search for virtual appointments, and uh, then you can pin it on the side. So when I, I do have mine pinned, you can right click on the icon and to pin it, mine's already pinned, so I'm not going to unpin it. Pin it just means it's going to be there whenever you need it. It's just like putting a little push pin on your wall there. It's going to hold it in place for you so it doesn't disappear and make you look for it again. But here you can see um, I am only pulling in one calendar. So that's, I would say, the only disadvantage or, or you, you can't see multiple calendars at once. You see one at a time, but you can see with our calendars, that's probably plenty to have to deal with one at a time. Up here is where it's going to tell you what bookings calendar you're pulling in. And uh, Danny, just so that, it, because I'm sharing, I'm not able to see chat. So if a question comes in, if you'll just verbally ask me, please, because uh, I'm not able to see it. Okay, thank you. So y'all feel free. If we're going along and something pops into your head, I know what it's like. I, I don't like officially have ADHD, but I'm pretty sure I do. I hate wondering something and waiting till the end of a session to ask it. So ask. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I want you to have that information and have the peace of mind to know that information up front, okay? So this is the calendar that I have pulled in. It's my bookings calendar. You are able to switch to other calendars. So if you have multiple that, like I said, I've got six or seven, you're able to switch around. So you can just connect to a different calendar. It's going to pull up. You just search for its, your calendar name and then you would click done to select that. For our purposes today, I'm sticking with this one because I prepped a few things here just to be able to show you this new app and so you can see kind of how it works. So at a glance, you get a view. These are just our regular meeting schedules, okay? Just a normal day in paradise. Up here is where I went ahead and put in a couple bookings uh, requests just so that you could see what that looks like, visually see the difference between your normal appointments and a bookings appointment. If you haven't used bookings, you'll want to know that it does make sure you're available, that that time is open before it, 
puts an appointment on your calendar. And you get to select, too, the days and times that you are available. So just to give you a preview of what it looks like in the Teams application, this is one that I created, again, just as, as a sample meeting. This is what it would look like so that I could get a quick view of um, who's coming in. So this is just my uh, generic email box. You would be able to see the actual user who's coming in, what time. Um, if you have any notes that they, the staff needs to have, you're able to place it here in those little notes. And this is just meant to be a quick preview, so it's not like you're modifying a lot. It's just a quick reminder of who, who am I having to deal with this morning? And you can see it right there. So that's what it looks like. And from the application, the benefit, too, is if you needed to make an appointment there. Somebody just walks in and says, hey, I, can I stop by at 2 o'clock? I really need to talk to you about whatever it is, and you want to get that booked on the calendar or just make it a Teams meeting so you can meet later, you are able to add those in ad hoc and put that information here. You're also able, you can assign staff to your bookings calendar. So you can see I've got several staff members online. So if somebody did need to meet and or maybe maybe needed to meet with Danny, and since he's trying to leave it too, he's already running late, um, we could give it to somebody else to be able to handle that appointment for him since he's he's trying to leave. And again, so there's some of these little options here. If you want to make it a Teams meeting as opposed to in person, if you do want to make it in person, we can add a note and say, uh, Joseph, sorry, this one is for you. Danny left early. He's never getting away with that, y'all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you could add a note that's just to your staff members so they can know this is in regards to uh, a graduation announcement. This is a second interview for a candidate, whatever that notation is that you need to make for that individual, you can place it there. And then you can have attendees join from a web browser to make it super simple for them. And uh, you can put in a custom confirmation message. So whatever it is. That, again, if you need them to wear pink, if they need to meet you outside at a locked door or call a number to get in, any of those special details. Now, I do want to call attention. You're going to see this a couple of times, and I'm going to talk more about it near the end of our session. So just know I'm acknowledging it exists, okay? If you see these little diamonds here, um, if let's see. Can you can y'all give me thumbs up? Will it come across my screen? Let me see. Can y'all give me a thumbs up if you see the little diamond that I'm talking about so I know I'm not talking to myself? I saw a hand raised. It's not coming on this one. I see hands raised, but no yeah, emoji thumbs it. up. Okay, y'all can see it? Good. Y'all can. I can't. So we're just going to pretend that it's, it's working great. <laughs> um, so great. If you see that, that means that this is a premium feature. Now, this is going to hit differently for everyone. This is very, very new to Microsoft, so I'm going to talk slowly about this for a moment. Now, Microsoft has multiple versions of their licenses. Our general licensing, you still get all of the normal features, all of this, the same standard features that we've been experiencing, but with Teams Premium, you get additional features. They're building in some, some premium, some specialty things within the product that you're able to receive. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but if you notice the diamond next to anything, those are going to be our premium features. They do not come with our standard licensing. Uh, I'm on a premium account so that I can test it and be able to share that information with you. But you'll probably see those in yours too, and it won't pull up and look like mine. I'm sharing mine so that you can see what it looks like as a department. You can evaluate and determine if that's that's benefit or not for y'all. Okay. So if you have been using bookings for a while, you know that, that it did used to use uh, text messaging. That's out. That's now a premium feature if you need to text a reminder for those notifications. Okay. And then you can just confirm there that they've consented to getting text and you can adjust your reminders. Um, any kind of reminder that you want both to attendee or staff and then you can customize the time message and make sure nobody forgets that they've made an appointment with you. Um, this is a, also one of the new features and look it, it's now it's pulling this up. I showed it to Danny earlier and it was letting me uh, preview it. This is something that we're still working on as part of the integration because it does have a uh, Microsoft Form plugin 
two bookings. And that's something that we're working with our stack team to investigate and see if we can get that added. And then that would just allow you when you're making those appointments to add a few supplemental questions to it. Should that be a need or a desire that's available? Okay, so I've shown you the, the home, which is the, um, well, no, I haven't. This, this is not actually the home. This is <laughs> the main page, not the scheduling page. But this, if you're playing with it um, at your desk too, the home screen is going to show you some of these previews. And you'll notice the, let's see, top right, bottom left have the diamonds. So yours may not have content filled in there. And that's okay, because again, it's just part of that premium license. But this is going to show you some of those advanced features that you can get. Um, you can see any of your, your schedule here. You are able to manage any of your account details here. So that's kind of what we talked about, getting your, your staff set, uh, services. If you're familiar with bookings, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, I think, on this. You see that a little bit better. Okay. If you're familiar with bookings, this is where I said that they've tried to streamline it, make it a little bit cleaner for you. Um, before in bookings, these were all kind of on that left column and it would pop up with a lot of different options. Here, it's a pretty easy, just fill in the blank uh, information for you. So you've got your general calendar details. These are your services. So if you're familiar with bookings, this is the, the product that you're offering. So the product, the appointment type that you're offering. And you can see a few of my samples here um, that are, are scheduled. You can add, change, turn them on, turn them off. So they don't have to be active all the time for you. Uh, so you can see I've got an M365 social media uh, specialist. I've got different interviews, different activities. So we can pull up one just to edit, just to, for you to preview and take a look. Very, very similar to bookings. They've just pulled that service in and given you a, a little bit cleaner way to add those details and that information. I'm going to try it one more time. Aha, it did. Okay. It let me from here, but not the other screen. Um, we're going to try this really quick because there's nothing better than trying something for the first time while you're live, right? I want to see what it looks like. And I couldn't get to it earlier, and it said you could only do it one time. So I was waiting for y'all. We'll see if it'll let me. Danny, are there questions while I while I load this magical new button? There are. I'm also trying to help. Trying um, to answer? Reply in the chat. That way it helps you a little bit. Um, let me see if there's any questions I'm, I haven't answered yet. Assisting forms. Add a form. Add a form to link. Does it mean add a link to a form? Is that what it means? Existing form. Yes. Add a link. Yeah, so, you, so if you ever, yeah, exactly. You can okay. link your, your existing or type it in. Do I have one? We're going to pull one up. Sorry, if you want to announce some questions to me while I do this. Or no, he doesn't. He's typing. Yes. Let's see. <laughs> Catch you in a bad time, I'm just maybe. going through them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yes, uh, Diana, I want to know if we can, uh, if we have access to the recording after, I believe we're going to yes. publish it, right? Yes, we absolutely will. So now that recording, it will be, and Cy can post too if she wants to pull our um, YouTube channel, Cy, if you want to pull that and you can post that in the chat as well. But we post that and we will put it, um, we will put it on YouTube for everybody. And Great then Renee question. was asked. Renee was asking, "Do we need to set up bookings to do virtual appointments?" And that is yes, yes. because it feeds absolutely. From bookings. It does, yeah. That's a great question. So all this is doing is, is pulling in that content that you've already established from bookings. So if you just want to go to bookings and, and create, or even from this page, well, I have to get on a forms here, but even from the app itself in Teams, it says connect to or create a calendar. So if you want to create it from the app, you can, but you'll need to create it because that'll give you the staff that you have. It'll give you your services and that kind of general information. So it says that I added it. I'm going to see where something went wrong. Okay, well, we tried. Um, I'm very curious to see what that is, but it does have that little option then there, link to a form. But again, this is a brand new app, so there's still, there's new things coming. Even as we've been planning this session, there's new things coming each day that we're seeing which is really fun when you're trying to plan something. 
Um, but you can, so from here, there's your services. Here is the new one that I mentioned too, the, and again, premium feature, so look for that diamond. This is the uh, on-demand. So if you, if you want to create a specialty service, um, just do open house, enter, gotta find the save button. And very hard to scroll while screen sharing. Okay, it doesn't want to go down. It's down here. I'd have to stop sharing and reshare because it doesn't want to move down here while I'm screen sharing because I'm right on the edge. But down here is where you can add those those individuals. So I made one for for drop in conversation. But if you're wanting to have just those those quick meetings, you're able to manage your service types here. And yes, you can create them from the application. Staff is anyone that you kind of, you want to be able to be assigned to whatever that service is. So if it's, if you're in counseling and you're scheduling some appointments uh, for individuals, you could put all of the counseling staff on there and people could either pick or you could have it auto assign based on availability. It has a lot of flexibility with how you set up your bookings calendar. So a lot of times when we do get those questions on, um, something's not working, it's not syncing. For bookings, it's something we really need to look at individually because there are so many individual customizations you could make that it can take a little bit to figure out what's going on. Uh, but you can see here too, this is just indicating the individuals that do have that premium license, again, for us for testing and preparing so that we can tell you what is out there. This is how you would add any staff members. So I've got Lauren on the call too. I could very quickly pull up her name and be able to add her. And again, you can determine each service because you saw I had multiple services. Maybe Lauren only uh, handles our questions in conferences with ambassadors, where Danny only does bookings consultation and Joseph does uh, Teams voice. You can customize it so that that staff member is only associated with that service. Um, and then you can see here too, I'm gonna, sorry Lauren, I'm pulling you out of the admin role here, but you can see here uh, too the different options for employees of what they want to receive. So I put Lauren as a scheduler so she can help schedule those appointments. Um, and then admin again would have full access, team member, and then viewer would just be able to just to see those but not schedule or change things on your behalf. So uh, this was also present in the, the bookings web application. This is where you would then go see uh, what your page looks like. And I think I have mine pulled up somewhere here. Uh, so if you did want to preview it on the web, this is what it looks like, the, the bigger, broader page. And you can see underneath, these are one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I was pretty close. Um, six of the bookings uh, calendars that I've created. So from here, this is just the web portal. And I'll show you briefly. This was the waffle. So from office.com, the little waffle I was talking about with the squares up there. And this is where you can see everything that you have access to. And there's bookings, which we're already on. So I'll open this page just so you can get a little visual uh, differences. So here, unlike the integrated app, this is just showing when we have appointments scheduled. It's not telling me all of those other uh, times for when people are busy or what other appointments are. So at a glance, it may look like, wow, we're really available and free. But as you saw in the Teams application, there were meetings almost every hour. And so it didn't give a true picture of people's availability. But, but here you can see this is just a little bit more elaborate, very similar to what I just showed you. It just has so many more options and drill down that that's where I think a lot of people, there was confusion in how to set up that bookings calendar. And here you can see as well, these are the services that are listed in the web application. So similar, um, but just a little bit, a little bit nuanced, more nuanced in the Teams version here, a little bit cleaner and easier to read. So I'll go ahead and show, um, or Danny, are there any other questions I need to address before I move on? I believe we're all caught up. Okay, great. Then y'all are, are quiet. They, maybe they already left for their two o'clock. <laughs> Sneak out. <laughs> yes. Um, wait. Wait. <laughs> there's one. 
And just one question? Right now. Or one person left? Um, Renee was just wondering, um, what's the need to use virtual appointments? And, you know, in terms of using the app versus um, just bookings.com or not bookings.com, but the bookings web browser. Yes. Yeah. The bookings version. Yeah. Great, great question. Um, the, the difference I'm about to move into, the biggest difference, if you do have premium license, I'm about to move into and show some of those analytics. I know I've met with different departments that have said, um, every counselor has their own page and we can't see how many people have, how many students are missing appointments, how, frequency of appointments, uh, the, the analytics, how long are they actually lasting. If we, we think that it normally takes an hour for a graduation consult, but it really only takes 15 minutes, where can we see that data where it's not just arbitrary off somebody's head? Another reason to use this app instead is just the simplicity of use. Uh, bookings really, I love it. I leverage it every day. I utilize it. It is a little bit more nuanced, especially if you're unfamiliar with it. So there's just a few more kind of plug and plays and click throughs to, to put in all of those settings and all of your preferences. It can do a lot. It just does a little bit more nuanced. The application version in Teams streamlines that for you. So it really simplifies it. And what I especially like about it, uh, it is here is just being able to, at a glance, be able to preview, um, you know, the team calendar and to see, okay, if we do need to fit in 15 appointments this week, how likely is that to happen based on the team's availability? Whereas the the web version, it doesn't show you these details. It doesn't it doesn't let you. Um, click through and see these individuals and what all they have going on. So hopefully that was helpful. And, and it does have this little filter too. So if you don't want to see everybody, if you really just wanted to see um, an individual schedule and be able to see, okay, what do we have going on? What can we, what can we schedule? What are the opportunities for making new appointments? You're able to kind of preview. And if you are somebody managing the staff and trying to put those appointments in, this method is so much easier because I know we get tickets very frequently with users asking, hey, can you just walk me through? Can you give me a call real quick? Can you show me how to do something? And we want to say yes, but then you saw um, it's not always uh, feasible for us to do based on uh, just demand. So this helps, this helps be able to preview that and give a bigger picture. So excellent questions. Love it, love it. Okay. So I think we went over everything in here. You got to see how to make appointments, services, staff, view those schedules. So we'll move a little bit more into these uh, premium. And I have to remember when I made appointments. It's going to be the hardest thing. I think. I'm going to look. Sorry, y'all. Or it's going to be mad and just not show. Why is it saying filter? Oh. Okay, 12. Okay. I know I put some in and now I'm not seeing them in here. So let me scroll through because if you have appointments, which I didn't do any on demand, maybe I put them for a different, I'm going to check. I know I have some on the fifth. Aha, there it is. Finally found it. Um, this preview, your queue is going to let you know what you've got coming up. So I scheduled a bunch for this morning. I think y'all saw that on the schedule. Those have already happened. They're not in the queue. They're not pending the next appointment. So those have kind of already disappeared. But you're able to see at a glance as, as a manager or somebody supervising multiple calendars, let's say, too, if you've got people coming in for tours of your facility and you need to know when to have tour guides ready or we just had our open house in OIT, if we needed to, to schedule those appointments or or breakout sessions or groups, I could be able to see how many we have scheduled at one time, what's coming up, and what type of service, what are people requesting, right? You're able to know and kind of prepare for that for your next week or your next day. So that's that's very helpful to see too. Um, and then if you needed to, you would be able to join that or send any additional reminders uh, there from your queue. So that's just kind of a quick Again, you can do all of that from the, the actual tabs um, or looking at your calendar. This just pulls it in a simplified manner, especially if you're viewing multiple 
bookings at once or you're managing a larger area where you have, like I said, like JSON, the number of counselors or um, career specialists all at once trying to book all of these appointments, this is an easier way to see all of that happening at once. So for some people, the premium, it may not be worth it, and that's fine. Uh, we don't get any commission, so Microsoft's loss. But just to be fair, if you don't need it, you don't need it. Uh, I'm just showing you what it can do so that if that's something helpful to your particular business use case, then you could leverage that if it's something that you desire. So again, this is just showing um, appointments. I, I just did these for, for testing purposes, just to be able to show you um, how many appointments we've had. Uh, and so you can kind of see that over time, if that's something that's helpful for your department to know how frequently you're getting those requests. So we can even, you can run different reports then too on how many appointments that you've had. You can see at a glance how long they've taken. I didn't join any of my fake appointments, so they're all no-shows. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't even show up for myself. Um, but you can see kind of at a glance what the, the duration would be. You'd be able to get some reporting from this. So again, you could assess as a department, is it really worth us having these things or they consistently go over, we need to extend the time on these. It's not sufficient to cover whatever details you have in that service. Um, but it is it is helpful to see when you are booking a, a lot of those things. Uh, so this is just, again, just showing you how many appointments that you've had, no-shows. I've had a lot because I didn't, I just didn't join the meetings I scheduled. Uh, but you're able to just preview several of these things. Um, as a quick kind of at a glance, and then you can run these different reports. So if you did need to report on that data uh, over time, you would be able to do so here and just run those various reports. I'm gonna pause again, Danny, and see if there's any additional questions that may have popped in. Um, yeah, we have one from Diana uh, who is asking, do on-demand appointments require time and duration? And is something like ASAP an option to where they are, uh, folks are waiting in line for a drop-in slot? Oh, that's a great question here. Let's see. Um, so I was trying to see if it even put the buffer time and all of those details in this as much as it did, because you're you're exactly right that um, with bookings, the, the formal bookings, uh, there was a lot more specializations, and I think that that ended up sometimes causing some confusion and problems for people because you could put buffer time, you could put kind of those start times, which you can still do. Um, but the on-demand, it depends on, let's see, I've got it under services here, and let's see, it's going to let me scroll. It's going to let me scroll there. I may have to reshare. Um, with the on-demand, it's just, it says up here too, it's similar to a walk-in in a waiting room. So it's really just for those quick, um, quick meetings. We'll see if it'll save here. I wish it would let me scroll down, but that's that's really all it is. So you're just booking those those quick on demands, and you can kind of make of it uh, what you want. So if you want it to be just that quick walk in, or if you need to schedule it for a little bit longer, it doesn't look like from what I've seen playing with it that it has any of that buffer time either. Um, which it just makes that it just makes it a little bit different here on the the newer version. Any other questions, Danny? Yeah, uh, Dominic had a really good question. It's, it's, as the name suggests, I'm gathering that while in-person appointments can be placed on the calendar through the virtual uh, appointments, analytics will be limited to the actual virtual events. Is this correct? Uh, is this there? Is there any particular functionality for in-person meetings? So yes, because you can go back in, that's a great question. That is a wonderful clarification. The, the staff member can go back in after a meeting has concluded, if it is an in-person meeting and add in any notes or information. Now, that is a far more manual process, of course, than it just timing your team's meeting by how long you've been in conversation or answering questions. But you are able to put in some of those stats a, a little bit more manually. Um, so that if you did want to manage and do some of those reports that you would be able to do that. And you're able to flag those appointments too um, as no-shows. So that way, if that's something that you're concerned about, if people aren't showing up and you wanted to get those analytics, 
but it is more manual. It is more manual. And I'll say the, the people that we've worked with primarily, it's not a every case, but the majority use this for Teams meetings because that seems to be, when they're working with students, that seems to be what the students' preferences are, is that they just want to pop on and ask questions or, or get information. Not that it's not used also for um, in person, but that would be an option that you could go and you'd have to edit it manually. Great question. And then Karen, asked, as, as, I was going to say, Karen did ask a question about um, her bookings calendar, but Karen, I'll uh, reach out to you. Um, it looks like it might just be a permissions issue. She's not able to schedule some bookings, so I'll reach out to you. Okay. And that's a good caveat too, just in that um, faculty and staff have access to bookings. Students do not just naturally have that as part of their license in our tenant. So if you do have a student that's wanting to, to help um, join your calendar or schedule, that would just need to come in to request and we would have to have a particular use case. Generally, that's reserved for RAs and TAs that would need to be on um, a schedule so that students could go see them for academic purposes. So that would just, again, that would just be an assessment that we would need to understand because we have uh, certain licenses and we want to make sure that the right people are having access to the right information. But you can absolutely request that too if you do want a student to be able to, to utilize that as well. Okay, I am going to stop sharing, switch screens again real quick. Um, just because I wanted to highlight, I know we just mentioned very briefly and I did promise I would come back to it. I wanted to be able to be true to my word and talk a little bit more about Teams Premium and kind of what that looks like and what that means for, for us uh, if in case people did see some things that they were a little bit interested in. Okay. Um, so Teams Premium, like I mentioned, it's it's relatively new. It is uh, something that Microsoft just released this summer. So if you are looking for enhancing the way that you host meetings, if you're looking for customizing your webinars, um, branding that experience of, of really sending that information out, Teams Premium has those add-on features for that, that more specialized customization. Um, they do say that there's improved protection for meetings. That's not to say that your current meetings are not protected and are not secure. They just have some advanced security if there is something uh, maybe research-based or highly confidential that you want some extended uh, protections on that that's available. It also allows uh, some advanced uh, management for us in, in just reporting and, and gathering information. And then the virtual appointment aspect, which is what we showed you today in those features. I know some, some departments very much wanted the availability of being able to send text messages as confirmations and, and have some of those features available. So this is one way to be able to do that, um, and that's through Teams Premium. And then this chart, hopefully that's not too, too small. Let's see if we Resize it, resize me so you can see that better. Um, so this is just really comparing one aspect of Teams Premium, and that's with the Bookings app. Teams Premium has different options. You, you get all of the Teams Premium when you get a Teams Premium license, um, but this is just comparing the difference so that if you did see it and you're like, you know, I really don't need the queue, I don't need all those analytics, I just want a quick way to make appointments, perfect. All you need then is that virtual appointments app and you're able to, to navigate and to receive that. So you're still able within just regular Teams licensing, you're still able to make appointments, join appointments, um, integrate with Microsoft Forms if we get that quirk figured out and <laughs> solved for you. Um, but the, the more advanced features then, if you have, if you want a customized waiting room, and that is a newer feature too. So when a user joins, uh, now they're able to join in a waiting room as opposed to, it, it, it's just rather than that black screen, the one that I call the black screen of death, it's just kind of very cumbersome and lonely. It, now you can customize it, you can put your logo, you can put some content or a picture so that when they join, they get to actually look at something. Um, if that's important to you, then, then that's available there. 
And then just like we said, the, those schedules in the queue are also available uh, in the team's premium license. And this is just comparing bookings. There's some other specialty features and others, but since this is really what we were focusing on today was bookings, I wanted to share that. Okay.